In this final lecture of this module, we'll talk about the future of human resource management. Some companies are reinventing their HR departments by getting rid of it entirely, calling it people, the people function or whatever, or at least delegating many of the duties to their HR department or to their frontline or department managers. The hiring and recruiting processes that traditionally occur in the HR departments can sometimes misalign with the needs of the department where the new hire will work. Delegating these processes to managers in the department leads to better placement of employees that are aligned with the needs and the environment of that particular department. It also gives management more of an active role in the leadership of his department or her department as he or she is responsible for the new and existing employees. So there is a lot with new technologies and online hiring and the like, and oftentimes uh, different kinds of like the gig economy of hiring uh, is short term workers. Some of the functions that have traditionally been done in HR departments can be done by departments. And so that's something to watch out for as we move into the future. Customers, employees, suppliers, all the participants in the business, they all come in different ages, genders, races, ethnicities, nationalities, and abilities. This is a truth that's been known for quite a while and it has come to be labeled diversity. When managers speak of diverse workforces, they typically mean diversity in gender and race. While gender and race are important characteristics of diversity, others are also important. Age, gender, race, ethnicity, and sexual orientation. These represent pr primary characteristics of diversity that are inborn and cannot be changed. But there are also other secondary characteristics like work background, income, marital status, military experience, religious beliefs, geographic location, parental status and education. These things can be changed, but still they, we, they create a diverse workforce. In dealing with diversity in the workplace, managers must consider the complete person, not one or a few of a person's differences. So why is diversity important? The U.S. workforce is becoming increasingly diverse. It was once dominated by white men. But today's workforce inc con includes significantly more women, African-Americans, Hispanics, and other minorities, as well as disabled and older workers. The Census Bureau, the Census Bureau has predicted that by 2042, minorities will make up more than 50% of the U.S. population. More and more companies are trying to improve human resource management programs to recruit, develop, and retain more diverse employees to better serve diverse customers. Effectively managing diversity in the workforce involves cultivating and valuing the benefits of diversity and minimizing its problems. There are a number of benefits to fostering and valuable work, valuing workforce diversity. Some of these include there's more productive use of human resources, different perspectives, resulting conflict among employees, reduced conflict among employees of different ethnicities. If there, if there are many or if there's a real diverse workforce, people don't necessarily feel left out. There's more productive work, working relationship, more diverse employees can learn about and accept each other. There's increased commitment to and a sharing of the organizational goals among diverse employees at all levels, increased innovation and creativity that comes from diverse perspectives and different kinds of decision-making and problem-solving approaches, and increased ability to serve the needs of an increasingly diverse customer base, which is after all, often what the, the organization is trying to accomplish. Companies that do not value diverse employees are likely to experience greater conflict as well as, as well as prejudice and discrimination. Astute businesses recognize that they need to modify their human resource management programs to target the needs of all diverse employees as well as the needs of the firm itself. Many companies strive to improve their working environments and their diversity through affirmative action programs, legally mandated, plan mandated plans that try to increase job opportunities for minority groups by analyzing the current pool of workers, identifying areas where women and minorities are underrepresented, and establishing specific hiring and promotion goals along with target levels, uh, target, tar target dates for meeting those goals to resolve discrepancies. Affirmative action began in 1965 when Lyndon B. Johnson, the president, issued his first of a series of presidential directives. Legislation passed in 1991 reinforces affirmative action. 
but it prohibits organizations from setting hiring quotas that revolt, result in reverse discrimination. Reverse discrimination occurs when a company's policies force it to consider only minorities in certain departments or for certain jobs or women whenever, instead of concentrating on hiring the best person who is also qualified important things to consider. So these are the challenges in HRM going forward. Um, we'll turn next to some of the um, some uh, some of the discussion points on Moodle. So let's talk now about what with some of the questions that we can have our discussion on Moodle of, uh, about following this lecture. On Moodle, join me in discussion of questions. These are the following questions. What activities are involved in acquiring and maintaining the appropriate levels of qualified human resources? Name some of them. What is the significance of the performance appraisal and how does that process work? Relate wages, salaries, bonuses, and benefits to the Herzberg distinctions between hybrid and motivation. Remember we talked about Maslow and Herzberg. Herzberg talked about uh, this hygiene versus uh, intrinsic motivation. How do these type of, uh, in your mind, how do these types of compensation relate to that, to that, as well as to the types of jobs people have? And besides collective bargaining and grievance procedures, what other alternatives are available to labor and management to handle their various labor disputes? So I look forward to you answering uh, some of these questions online and having uh, some discussion about how human resource management operates in companies and how we expect it to move forward in the future. And we'll see you online.